Hello, hello, hello. We, I am super excited about today, about this podcast. I always am. Podcasts are so much fun. You know what? I just love podcasts. They're so much easier than YouTube videos. Um, But YouTube videos have their own, like, excitement and joy of their own. But podcasts are just so simple. So, anyways, I'm just excited about today's podcast. I'm going to be talking about... I am talking about... Um... People that don't grow up in religion. Now, let me explain before I get into anything. I'm not sure at this point, as I'm recording this, what I'm going to call it. But this is not just about religion. It's people that mainly don't grow up with Jesus. Yes, I'm saying religion. Because a lot of what I'm going to talk about pertains to people that don't grow up with some sort of structure or, like, something that was handed down to them from their parents of this is the right way to live, you know, whatever, in quotations, you know what I mean? Like, the parents saying this is the right way. The parents saying this is, you know, how to do X, Y, Z, you know. So, I'm really excited to just, this, this, I I mean, I don't even know if excited is the right word. I don't think excited is the right definite, like, description word for this. I, this, this whole topic is so intriguing to me like I want to have a conversation with somebody you know and so I did I didn't have a conversation that's I need to clarify I listened to well one person talk about this and so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today I did listen to some person one person talk about their experience growing up without a religion and I found it extremely fascinating extremely how do I say just I was listening and found myself just wanting to ask a million questions and I also found my heart just opening to this person like I found myself just wanting to share with them everything I know but as I listened more to this person I found they might not want to exactly hear everything I have to say so it got me thinking I want to just talk a little bit about some of the things that they talked about. I'm going to mention different topics or different aspects of their non-religious life. Of growing up with no structure, nothing to believe in, nothing to hope for, nothing to hang on to when you're having a hard time. And so... Or a good time. Just nothing to believe in. And it made my heart just be so open. So just yearning to just hear this person out. Anyways, so I'm going to waste no time. I'm going to jump right into it and just start chit-chatting about the things that I learned and I did learn which is interesting okay number one 
this person believed there to be nobody that is bigger. Like, no... No one bigger, like, big universe, big... That there's nobody. Like, out there. Just that alone is takes your breath away if you have no one to believe in no one that you know is looking out for you other than the people on this earth that is so disheartening anyway uh, they make up their own universe They make up their own God, so to speak. Like, they make up their own beliefs, their own... I'm going to get into that a little bit more, but they make it all up. Which in one case is like, oh my gosh, you're just making it up. Like... In one sense... Number one, you have no accountability. Number two, I think that brings a lot of confusion in a way. Like you are making up whatever rules you want. And I'm going to get into that more as well. But like, it's completely fabricated. Your own universe, your own world that you live in. Not having a God is hard for people. This person talked about not having a God, not having um, their parents didn't grow up with any religion. They went to like, you know, they went, ended up going to a private school because of the education level and how good that was. But um, they didn't grow up with you know, their family believing in the Lord or anything else. So not having someone to, you know, I keep wanting to say, like, rest your head on your pillow, like, rest, your like, that you can rest your heart on, like, that doesn't make sense either, to rest, like, to go to sleep at night in peace, knowing There's somebody, the Lord, is looking out for you. The Holy Spirit is there. Not having a God would be so hard. I mean, thinking that this life is, I mean, what what do you have to live for if, like, Just enjoy the time while you're here, I guess, you know. Especially when you go through hard times. And this person just explained how difficult it was. They went to a private Catholic school, but how it was extremely difficult not having, like, all these people around them had somebody to believe in, something to hope for, you know. But they didn't. And how difficult that was. I mean, in a way, for me, that would be really stressful. That would be really... No guidance. No direction. No accountability. In a way, no freedom. You're bound to anxiety. You're bound to stress you're bound to fear you know that that's a scary feeling and there's people out there that live with that every single day and just thinking about it I don't know just a lot so 
um, they're always searching, always looking, needing something to live for. This um, really is, uh, I think, every Christian's testimony, you know, looking for something, needing something to live for, something to believe in, something to hope for. You know, I've said this in a million podcasts, probably. A pastor once said to me, the three best things, the three things you need to live a good life is something to do, something to hope for, and someone to give and receive love to. And so I think not having anyone to believe in or to hope for nothing to move on to nothing to guide your life by unless something you make up you know they don't have a religion or God to help them get through hard moments as well as a community. This I never thought of. Like a good community that you can go to when you're struggling with temptation, you're struggling just just simply like you want to have you want to um Find a good dentist, you know. You go to the community. Who's a good dentist? Maybe a a believer dentist, you know. You have a you have a good community around you. People to keep you accountable. People to love you. People to g- encourage you in times of difficulty. You know, and 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 that isn't always the case if you don't have what a quote unquote, you know, a religion or um a belief you know um you don't have the lord himself to encourage you to speak to you you don't have the lord you like in all my fear in all my worry in all my stress i go to the lord and he's the only one that gives me peace you know he's the only one that can satisfy or bring relief like just today I was worried about mountain lions in our area and uh, kept my head on a swivel and every time I would look around you know all of a sudden you know I'm running and my head's just going all around I'm looking behind me because mountain lions attack from behind right so I'm just looking around and the Lord stops me. The Holy Spirit goes, you don't think that a little, like a mountain lion is like your neighbor's cat to me? It's so simple for me to wipe that thing out. And you're over here not trusting me with a cat. A kitty cat I created. To pro- like, you don't trust that I can protect you from this kitty cat? Mom line. And I, I was shook. And I just thought of, like, my husband and um, one of my spiritual moms says, you make God this small. And they make their hands real small, their little fingers, like, close together. You make him so small. When you do that and you bring you, you you you're you're fearful of something so minuscule, so tiny compared to who he is, a little animal that he made, and he can't take that out. So, anyways, um, 
not having the Lord to get through your hardest moments in life. Honestly, I don't know. I feel like I would be very fearful my whole life. Um, this person was still praying to something or nothing or not sure. They're not sure what they're praying to. They're not sure if God received it. But they did say it was a natural response. So I think it was funny that they were like, they still prayed because it was a natural response. To something or to nothing or to something they're not sure. And they're not sure if God received it or if it is God. And it's funny because they're like something, nothing. And they're not sure if God received it. So it's like they jump, 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 nothing. And then they assume, oh, maybe, you know, God didn't really receive it. But they're still acknowledging God. I found that interesting. But they, but but them making it a natural response, they said that it was a natural thing for them to do. The Lord placed that in us. And I just wanted to talk to this person and be like, this is naturally who you are, is to pray and commune with the Father. That's why it's a natural response. Because it's a natural, it's who you are. You're meant to be with the Father. You're meant to speak speak with him to to go on walks with him to pray to him to complain to praise to worship to to i don't know just everything get angry whatever it is you you you're going through you're meant to commune to him and that's why it was a natural response oh that's all i just wanted to say ooh Anyways, um, they turned it into a, like, a, the prayer into a manifestation rather than, like, a prayer to God. They called it a prayer, but, like, their answers to prayers were, like, manifestations to a God or manifestations to a, uh, <sighs> sorry about that. A bigger, a bigger um, power, a higher, you know, power, universe, which is nothing to them. Like, it's not a person, per se, just some sort of power, which is so interesting. So interesting. Um, They always talk about, like, Oh, you know, the, like, whatever they're talking about, they're like, this is me only. Like, I personally, you know, want to manifest things or whatever. And that nothing is the right answer. Oh, that just, it just, um, I don't know. It, that, that, that impacts me. And, and it must be, you know, that line, that fence that they're crossing where it's like, oh, it's only good for me and mine. And, you know, you do whatever's best for you, but this is what's best for me. It's like you get to choose. And and I don't know why that, like, does that to me? Like, ooh, like, if you get to choose, yes, we get free will. Of course we get to choose, but, like, you get to choose whatever. Like, obviously, you're making yourself your own god, which is the devil himself, you know? So, so this is such a good person, you know, that is saying all these things. And I love them. But it's like... Man, you're making yourself your own god. And that's... The devil... But it's crazy because it's so close. Like, like obviously, what is best for me is not best for you, and I'll make my own. That's clearly not the Lord. But I'm going to touch on that in a little bit. But anyways, I kind of already said this, but they were...
kind of just were like, I believe in the universe and it's like a force like a god, but not a god because it doesn't have a face. It's not a real being, just a force in a way that's kind of scary in a bad way, you know? It's not good, necessarily. I don't know. That would be really scary. They believe everything happens for a reason, which is cool. Because, again, you're touching on something the Lord, I do believe the Lord, created. And that the Lord has a part of that everything happens for a reason. Um, the Lord has a, a plan for everything. And in a way, it's funny that these people, you know, this a person that never grew up with a religion or a faith, you know, believes that everything happens for a reason. Again, I think that's just a natural thing that the Lord puts in you. You know, so they see connections how the and and this this I'm adding this myself, they see connections like how everything happens for a reason, how you can something bad can happen and then and then it will turn out because of that bad thing, something even better came out of it, and obviously we know that the Lord makes all things happen for your good. And for a reason. And for good, like, as a Christian. He does it for your good as a Christian. But, like, when you're not a Christian, I mean, I don't know. That's a whole other thing. But it's so interesting how they can see connections. When they don't, you know, believe in the Lord. or And they believe in whatever they feel like. You know? But they still see the connections that the Lord's hand is in. And I love that. Because it's a constant, open, like at any moment, they could, the Lord could just reveal himself. And oh boy, he could. But he chooses to give subtle hints. To nudge them, to draw them. He's constantly drawing Because as humans, we're constantly seeking for something more at all times. So we're always, I just feel like we're being drawn. I mean, that's just me, but you know. Um, they feel like the universe tells them what to do, like gives them signs. Isn't that funny though? Giving them signs? Like, like what in the world? I love that. Not that the universe gives signs. I love that it's clearly the Lord giving you a sign. But you can't see him. You're blind, you know? But the Lord is constantly inviting us into a conversation that's what those signs are yeah um spiritually formed spirituality formed naturally i kind of already said this how mishaps turn into good things and i i wrote in my comments like when I was taking notes, is like, oh, so close. Because spirituality is normal. Because you're a spiritual being, bro. That's why spirituality is normal. Because you're not from this world. You're a spiritual being. You, you were knitted in your mother's womb. Your spirit was knitted to your body. You know? You are put together. Your body was put together by the Lord. And your spirit put together in your body by the Lord. That's why spirituality is so normal. Because you are a spirit. And you are from the Lord. You know. You came from heaven. But they see how like random things turn into good things. And they're just so close. 
but not quite, right? But isn't that how the like the devil works? Just looks just like the the Lord, but not quite, just off. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Um, they put things out into the universe versus us praying to God himself. They put things out, just kind of throw them out there like thoughts and prayers out into the atmosphere to be heard or to be received by a force that will inevitably send them what they want, you know? Like a mystical genie being force, I don't know. Rather than having a conversation slash relationship, with the Lord, telling him your concerns and your thoughts and your prayers and your needs and your desires and your wants and your your love, you know. They make their own rule book of your own grounds. Um, they created it on their own. How confusing, how frustrating probably at times how just chaotic in a way because it's like you just make up whatever you want and if it didn't feel it doesn't feel right in the moment like let's say you have you make a rule but then later on doesn't feel right you just change it or do you feel guilty after? I don't know. I mean, it's just not the Lord. But again, they didn't grow up with the Lord. Um, they took what they wanted from other religions, from lots of religions, like different pieces for like a moral compass, which I found so interesting. Like they are mostly a mix of like Buddhism and Christianity but like it also is interesting how they all overlap and all intertwine that seriously caught my attention seriously captivated me that they would want to take again pieces of the Lord but then it still be twisted in the end because it's not fully him. It's not fully relationship with God and accepting Christ. You know? That he died for your sins. You know? It doesn't have the only way you can get to heaven. I mean, there's so much to say about this. Obviously, the only way to heaven is through Jesus. And, um, I guess it's not obvious to everyone, which is why we have to share it, you know? Which is why we have to give away what we've been given freely. And, uh, I think this is going to conclude today's podcast. I'm going to do part one, part two of this. I found this extremely intriguing. Sorry this is a bit short today. But I will continue to do a part two next week. So stay tuned. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. There's a little check mark if you're on Apple Podcasts or subscribe at the screen subscribe button wherever you're listening please leave a review i love you so much thank you for listening please follow go tgd on twitter and georgia hertford underscore on instagram thank you so much and i will see you next week they started learning things because they read them even though like from all different religions even though they don't identify with a specific religion. And every religion has something good to say. I found this super, 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 super interesting because I've always known that, like, 
all the religions kind of, in a way, overlap. I mean, in Islam, Jesus existed, Moses existed, Isaac existed. You know, they, they acknowledge that, you know. And Buddhism has a lot of the same, like, the Ten Commandments. Not exactly that, but, like, they have a lot of good morals and principles and values, you know. But it's not, the central focus is not the Lord. It's not Jesus, that he died on the cross, that he rose for your sin, that he um, 